Hello everyone, it's Megan from KenHub here and in today's tutorial we'll be discussing the descriptive terms used to describe the regions of the head and neck. You may be wondering why we divide the body into so many regions. Well, each portion of the body, such as the trunk of the body, the upper limbs, the lower limbs, and of course the head and neck, is divided into regions to help clinicians in the identification of injuries or pathologies to underlying organs, bones, or muscles. So the body is divided into many, many regions, and we'll actually cover them across five different tutorials. But today, as you know, our focus will be on the regions of the head and neck, or the region you can see contained within the blue rectangle on your screen. We'll begin this tutorial by looking at the regions of the head, then we'll move on to the regions of the neck. The head is divided into quite a few regions, and these regions are in turn grouped into either regions of the neurocranium or regions of the viscerocranium. Let me draw a line on our nice image of the skull here to show you roughly where this division occurs. So above the blue line we have the neurocranium, and below it we have the viscerocranium. So essentially the neurocranial portion of the skull protects the brain, and the viscerocranial portion forms the face. So first let's look at the neurocranial portion of the regions of the head. These regions are named according to the underlying bones with the exception of the auricular region which we'll discuss later on. As you can see here, the first region of the neurocranial portion that we'll talk about is the frontal region. This region is situated at the front of the head, overlying the frontal bone, and encompasses the area of the forehead. If we look at another illustration, we can see that the frontalis muscle, now highlighted in green, is also found in this region. The next region of the head that we'll look at is the parietal region, which refers to the area on either side of the head that overlies the parietal bones of the skull, as you can see indicated by these arrows here. Now if we flip our skull to view it from above, we can see the parietal bones much clearer and that they're roughly square in shape. Moving on, we can see the temporal region of the head, which is also located on either side of the head, but below the parietal region as shown by our arrows here. This region of the head overlies the temporal bones of the skull, and if we flip our skull to view it from below, we can see the temporal bones a bit better, and how they contribute to the zygomatic arches of the skull. The fourth region of the head is the occipital region. This region is located at the back of the head and is the region overlying the occipital bone of the skull. Note that the frontal and occipital regions of the head overlie unpaired bones of the skull in contrast to the temporal and parietal regions of the head which overlie paired bones of the skull. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website, not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles, and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full-length video and master anatomy.